listen to all original music on Shazzy's Radio. You're listening to Awake Radio. Straight talk to the awake and aware. to take the kids to the bus our kids I don't even hear them I think they have a snow day I have no idea how much snow there is I don't even look out the window but I have a, a big really 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 big show today I'm going to talk about Fukushima and fake snow Woo! and now everybody can't wait so um, as I sit here and think about it, I'm not even set up <laughs> I'm going to Put a couple tunes on and um, hopefully we'll uh, be all ready as soon as these pods download and it's all good. Thank you, Paula. You be safe and I'll talk to you in a little bit and uh, we're going to get ready to, to play some tunes and uh, maybe I'll put on uh, some Lauren Murray because she always uh, wakes everybody up. Interesting information she has about radiation in Fukushima. So uh, I think that should be pretty good. Um, we have some people on chat. Welcome everybody on chat, and thank you everybody for being here at Wake. And we're also simulcasting on Shazit's radio, so we're all good to go. And uh, we will be listening to some big companies. So thank you all for listening, and I'll find some more Murray so we can uh, get a little bit of uh, a taste of what we're in for today. Thank you all for listening to AwakeRadio.co.uk and ShizzesRadio.com. Straight talk here for the Wake and the since the BP disaster, which seems to have reactivated based on some flyovers that I saw from Wings of Care in the last few days. There are huge slicks appearing once again in the Gulf of Mexico. The planes, at least what I've heard from local reports, the planes are still spraying core exit. And radiation and core exit has a synergistic relationship that I don't fully understand. Could you talk a little bit about that? The uh, radiation exposure of um, organisms in their developmental stages um, has uh, a, a horrific, uh, very negative uh, biological effect that is 10 to 100,000 times uh, damaging and harmful than chemical exposure. Even the strongest chemicals like thalidomide now, when you put very small amounts, amounts of radiation or very small amounts of certain chemicals into the environment or you expose people to them, those very low levels, ultra low levels and very low levels uh, are actually more harmful than higher levels 
that they produce uh, per unit of, of, of radiation because the very low levels produce free radicals that are separated or they're far apart from each other because there isn't a high density of free radicals released. So they run around and, and, and just create havoc in the cells and in the body processes. When you have a higher level of radiation exposure, contamination of the body, you have lots of free radicals, a lot more free radicals running around, and they can actually run into each other and neutralize each other. That's why low-level radiation, low-level chemical exposure is very, very bad. However, when you put low levels of radiation and mix it with low levels of chemicals, they have a multiplier effect that is uh, 10 or more times uh, the effect of either one of them. So um, it's 1 plus 1 is not 2. It's 1 plus 1 is like 10 or 100 or 1,000 or Nobody really knows because the research and the laboratory experiments and so forth would be so expensive to do because there's so many variables that only a government could afford to do that. And um, so they, they don't really know. And I went to the Department of Health, California Department of Health office in uh, the city of Berkeley a number of years ago when I was an environmental commissioner in Berkeley. And I sat down with Dr. Calvin White, who was the head of the office there, and I said, Dr. White, how, do, uh, how did the EPA and the health agencies uh, determine the uh, exposure limits for chemicals? And he said, well, I said, like, you know, benzene and, and whatever. And he said, oh, we just made them up. I said, you made them up? He said, yeah, we couldn't afford to um, do that research. Only a government could. And anyway, it'd be too complex. So we just made them up. And he said, the benzene limit, I can guarantee you, will give you um, cancer, liver cancer, within 10 years. He said, in fact, you know the woman who invented whiteout? You know, when you make mistakes on type documents, you could you just paint that uh -huh. white paint on them. He said she used uh, benzene as the solvent for the white whiteout when she uh, first developed it. And he said she died of liver cancer. So they are combining Corexit, which is completely illegal in the United States to use it the way BP used it. They were told by the government, by the EPA, by the president, everybody to stop using it, and they ignored everything. And they're down there spraying again because they want to reach a kill rate that they have predetermined. And uh, what you're saying exactly fits into my observations and the information that I've been able to acquire on what was happening in Iraq and, and other countries. You gave an excellent example as well in a, in a lecture that I heard from April of 2011 about how the effects of radiation are multiplied when chemicals are presented as well. And I think it was a Native American miners. Yes, that is a very well known from the studies, medical studies on the Navajo uranium miners in the um, probably 50s and 60s. And the Navajos, well, uranium was discovered all over western areas, especially New Mexico, and a lot of it was on the Navajo and other Indian reservations because they were given the worst land. And uh, unfortunate for the Indians, 70% of the energy resources and minerals are on their tribal land, so they're being de depopulated even faster than us. And the, the Navajo miners had horrible um, increases in lung cancer and other diseases, but especially lung cancer. 
And uh, the studies were done, very careful studies, not just by the government, by, but by other individuals too. And it was discovered that the uh, lung cancer rates were much lower in uh, Navajos who did not smoke. And, however, the Navajos who did smoke were combining uh, the chemicals that are in tobacco. Who knows what they put in tobacco, but they put chemicals in to make, make, it, make the tobacco um, even more addictive. And those chemicals were combining with the uranium in the air in the mine that the miners were inhaling. And so there, there's a really good example of synergistic effect where the chemicals mixed with uh, radiation increase the, the health and the biological effect and do a lot of damage. Letter from Shaziz. To bring brilliant minds from every nation together and solve the world's problems one positive pebble at a time. It will be the we the people of the world that bring about the true change, peace and love to all. Government solved no problems. If the intent was to do so, it would already be done. Wars, starvation, sickness, oppression, Financial slavery, death, and destruction is what governments do best. With all the military might of every nation, governments use their power to destroy nations. The question is, why not use that might to bring to the hungry food, shelter the homeless, heal the sick, and so on? True representation of truth, freedom, and justice comes from we the people and has never came from slick talking politicians that will say whatever they have to to get elected and then regulate away our freedom there is no reason for a starving baby to exist in our world of today but yet it goes on there is no reason for wars and sickness yet it continues we must stop feeding the beast that is eating humanity alive we the people of all nations have the power to bring about a literal heaven on earth you as an individual have more power than you can possibly imagine you have the power of the spoken word you have the power of the pen you have the power of your actions and most of you have the power of love it is time to use this power to make our world a better place we are the founding fathers mothers sisters brothers aunts uncles nieces nephews and cousins of our children and our children's children of the future into the future and beyond what we do today will define the world that they live in tomorrow let us from every nation come together and make that future a great one from his is peace and love to all Hello? I love you. One day I was at home and I was procrastinating doing homework and you guys know exactly what that's like. Because I still, well, I did it all the time. And at the time I was sitting at home and I wanted to listen to music on YouTube. And you guys know whenever you look on YouTube and then there's like a right hand column of like related videos. Well, that's what I saw. And when I looked a little bit closer, I realized that there was a picture that looked really, really familiar on the related column. So I clicked on it, not knowing that me clicking on this little picture that I thought was me would change my life completely. I didn't know it would be a defining moment in my life when I clicked on that video. What's the video? I clicked on it. The first thing I saw was, okay, yes, that is my picture from when I was 11 years old, when I was on that show. I looked a little bit above this video, and the title of this video was The World's Ugliest Woman. I want you to take a second and let that sink in. 
Think how that would feel if you are randomly just listening to music, you somehow see a picture of yourself, and someone lab labels you the world's ugliest man or the world's ugliest woman. Just think how that would make you feel. Now, picture yourself scrolling down after seeing this awful, awful video. And picture how you would feel if you looked down and you saw that over four million people had saw this video. Four million. I continued to scroll down and I saw that this video was eight seconds long. I pressed play and there was no sound. And I thought, there's an eight second video with no sound that over four million people saw of only me calling me the world's ugliest woman. I literally felt like somebody was putting their hand through the computer and punching me over and over and over. I still to this day don't know why I did this, but I scrolled down and I saw that there were thousands and thousands and thousands of comments on this eight second video that had no sound. I sat there and I read every single one. And not one was positive. Not one. These comments range from people telling me to do the world a favor and just put a gun to my head. Some were saying, why don't you just walk out of your house with a bag over your head? Because if people see your face, they're going to go blind from your ugliness. People were giving me tips on how to kill myself. I was in high school when I saw this. The video clip was from when I was 11 years old. And it said it. Clear as day on this video, it said 11 years old. And I couldn't understand how anyone, no matter what age, could think how to just jump on this bandwagon and say these awful, awful things, not knowing that I would one day somehow stumble upon it. I cried my eyes out reading these comments. My confidence level went from being up here to being way down here to almost not even existent. And I feel like it took me a really long time to get to that point. In an instant, it was brought down completely. My tears quickly turned to anger. I quickly wanted to just wipe the tears off my face pull out the keyboard and reply back to every single comment. I didn't know what I was going to tell them, but I just wanted to make them feel bad. I wanted to make them feel bad for hiding behind their computer screen and saying these awful things about someone that they don't even know. But then I stopped and I realized, what am I going to accomplish? What am I going to do if I sink down to their level? Nothing. I'm going to be fighting a never-ending battle that's going to prove nothing. I'm just going to become one of those people that hides behind their computer screen and makes fun of other people or makes other people feel bad about themselves. And that's not who I was raised to be. So I stopped and I had a very hard time swallowing this video. A very hard time, I'm not going to lie. But something clicked in me, some little voice in the back of my head, which I know is God. And I heard, just wait, let it go. Just let it go and wait. And that's what I did. I let it go, and yes, it was very hard for me to kind of pick myself up from that. Very difficult. But I did what my parents told me when I was in kindergarten. They said, just continue to be yourself, and others will see that. So that's what I did. I continued high school. Everything was wonderful, despite 
this video. I was excited to meet new people. I was excited to start this new journey in my life. And without even trying, my life kind of started, everything kind of just started falling into place. My relationship with God was better than ever because in that moment when I realized that I wanted to be a speaker, I was like, God, I get you now. I get it. I'm st I still have some questions, but I get it. You made me the girl that I am for a reason. You gave me all those struggles growing up to make me stronger. You made me look different so that I could see the beauty that isn't defined by the media. And yes, I am still learning. But the feeling that I get, that I know that God is working through me and helping me tell you something, is the greatest feeling in the entire world. But all these things were something that I cannot take credit for on my own. I cannot. The only way that I was able to accomplish all of those things and will be able to continue for the rest of my life is with my faith, my family, and my friends. My faith is number one in my life. And I think that God gave me this syndrome before I looked at it as a giant flashing sign that said, curse. I look now at what God gave me on this billboard and I see a giant bright happy sign that says blessing and I will always look at it as a blessing all the questions that I had all the whys all the why me why God did you do this to me have all been answered and I've learned to stop asking why because I've learned that God does absolutely everything for a reason. And you have to basically just lay it all down and let God take care of it. Because He will, whether you see it or whether you don't. You will eventually be so surprised and think, Thank you, God. Before you have this problem, He already knows how He's going to help you get through it. How great of a feeling is that whenever I do things I get excited because I know that God is going to be there to help me God is going to be there to pick me up when I'm down and to lift me even higher when I'm excited I will tell you right now that if you stop asking why and if you start saying thank you God all your answers will come to you. All of them. I want to thank you for having me, for listening to my message, and I hope, I hope that some of you know that God put you here for a reason, and He wants you to share that reason no matter what. Hello. You're listening to Chrissy McMahon, and this is Alchemical Connections. Thursday mornings, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. Only on AwakeRadio.co.uk. Straight talk for the awake and the aware. You're listening to Shaziz Radio, where originality and original music never stop. Isn't that that mad scientist dude? Welcome to Rick Radio. And good morning. It's me again. Thank you for being here. This is Alchemical Connections uh, with me, your host, Chrissy McMahon. Here on awakeradio.co.uk and shizzisradio.com. We're also uh, available on our sister website at awakeradio.us. Um, so check us out over there too. Uh, as we're listening here, I, uh, I want to inform everybody.
everybody that here in uh, Laporte, Pennsylvania, the weather is snow. Uh, I imagine the twins have a snow day. I don't hear anybody moving. Usually if it's a two hour delay, they're up to. Uh, we have about 22 degrees Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit here with a very light snow, which threatens till 8 o'clock, 11 o'clock tonight. So uh, I heard four inches before I went to bed last night, and I didn't really watch any reports, so I'm not sure what we're going to get here. So uh, hopefully it's going to be a light accumulation, I'm not sure. And um, we only have 42 more days till spring. Yay! Count, let's put on your calendar, countdown. And in honor of Valentine's Day tomorrow, I will be featuring love songs. And hopefully the message will be one of hope and inspiration uh, to help everyone seek solutions and not the, the drama of everyday life. So, uh, you know, just try to uh, fill yourself with hope and joy. Today's show will feature uh, pods from uh, Rev. Michelle Hopkins speaking about fake snow. The Fukushima Disclosure from the ENE News and Rad Chick. And we'll be posting those uh, links on the chat room so you can check them out there if you have any questions. And uh, Paula mentioned we have a new show with host Barry Prince tonight at 8 p.m. Uh, that'll be 1 a.m. at Greenwich Mean Time here on Awake Radio. And it's called The Liberty Beacon Presents The Big Puzzle with Barry Prince. So I want to give a big shout out to our new host, Barry Prince, and thank him for joining us here at Awake. And uh, if you're interested in, in hosting or just uh, want to check us out, please check out our sister website at awakeradio.us. And uh, you'll get lots more information about the wonderful host here, what we do here, and you, if you're interested, you can uh, sign up uh, to be a host if uh, maybe you have a show or something to say. So uh, before we start, I'm gonna I'm gonna play "Despicable Me," the happy song, and uh, get us all on a good foot. So thank you all for listening. This is me, Chrissy McMahon, and I'll be back. Uh, we're probably gonna listen to Reverend Michelle Hopkins first. And the fake snow. But before that, despicable me. Love you. Who was one of the world's foremost authorities in atmospheric science about the artificial snow that is falling all over North America. I asked him, what is this aerosol polymer compound? How great, how great. This is Rev. Michelle Hopkins. And why was this compound used rather than the normal snow-producing aerosols? After researching the areas being aerosoled, this was the answer he was given. The main uses for a quote-unquote snow, as it is commonly known, are military. He was then cautioned that open-ended conversations on this topic should be strictly avoided. As for the cover story, which I mentioned would come immediately following any information he had for me, if such information is classified, this is what he was instructed to ensure the public. The military applications of snow, quote-unquote, are life-saving and truly beneficial. So I have done a microscopic analysis on this military-delivered artificial polymer snow as it has been confirmed. And this is what I learned. The first thing that I found truly remarkable was there were polymers in this of different types. There were white sheets of polymers, an entire sheets, 
and there were holes in these polymers where living organisms had created an effect of expelling gas and creating holes in these polymers like Swiss cheese. In one instance, we see a living organism traveling down this polymer. It gets stuck in this concave hole that another living creature has made when it was dying. It comes out of that hole and comes down only to be swallowed up by the polymer itself. I'm not entirely certain if the polymer itself swallowed this creature or if the creature just dove down into the polymer or if it actually was fused with the polymer because something else diabolical was found in this military snow. Depleted uranium unmistakably was found in this military snow. One of the reasons for depleted uranium in aerosols that are being sprayed by the military are to fuse living and non-living animate and inanimate organic and inorganic particulates together to make a new species. Fusing them together to make a cyborg organism and we are actually able to view this process in this military application snow. Here we can see obvious depleted uranium. It is most definitely depleted uranium. We can see the depleted uranium fusion that was produced into a renucleated new species. This is a mecha organism. Okay, it's a mechanical organism or a cybernetic organism. It is a single cell cyborg. There are polymer producing nanites. The depleted uranium is being used as a catalyst to create this mecha orga fusion process. And as it happens, these holes are being created in this polymer sheet because methane gases are released. That's part of the reason for the green color in the sky when this is going on. Another reason is for the other organisms that are being aerosoled into the sky. This is what you get when you fuse a single-celled organism with a polymer producing nanoparticle. A nano cyborg which is a polymer fiber 3D printer. You've seen those 3D printers. You can actually program it to print out anything it's the forerunner of Star Trek's replicator. You can give it all the materials it needs down to the very molecular structure and give it a computer program to tell it exactly what to print out and it will 3D print out anything. That's what these are. These are nano cyborg polymer fiber 3D printers. They are programmed to print, 3D print, polymer fibers. Here we see two large polymer fibers, a newly fused nano cyborg ready to start production right here, a nano cyborg 3D printing polymer fibers right here. Hello, I'm Bob Ross, and I'd like to welcome you. First of all, let me take just a moment to thank you for allowing me back into your homes. If this is your first time with us, let me extend a personal invitation for you to drag out your oil paints and paint along with us each week. Let's go over to the canvas here and let's get started. I believe, I believe, every day's a good day when you paint. 
back um i just wanted to give a little <laughs> introduction and kind of apologize because that pod cut off halfway and i was <laughs> really getting interested in it but um things happen for a reason i posted the link on the chat boxes so you can uh, look at that at your leisure but i just wanted to uh, remind everybody in case you haven't heard that um there's been uh, people posting about fake snow on, on the internet, mostly, I guess it would be YouTube. And it started with Georgia. There was a woman, uh, she brought some snow in and she lit it with a lighter. And miraculously, the snow didn't melt, but uh, a black soot uh, formed. As, the, uh, as the, the lighter touched the snow, it kind of compressed. As if it were melting, and they tried to call it um, transcription or some craziness. That instead of going to a liquid, it goes immediately to a gas. Um, so it goes from a solid to a gas. And we know there's three three states of, of matter. There's solid, liquid, gas. So, but there's a fourth state too. But um, I don't know that this applies to water. So. Um, I actually was given the uh, video by uh, one of our hosts here, uh, True Secret 22. So when I got home that night, I went out, got some snow, and I made my own little video. And the same thing happened, and as a result, I accumulated about 15 different little pods of people doing the same thing around the world, I think even in Holland. And uh, they were they were comparing it to ice melted ice and uh, also uh, uh, just all kinds of uh, craziness I mean it's it, the ice melts when you put the fire to it it melts like 
like water melts when the heat touches it. When you put the snow near a, any heat source, it, it compresses. Um, but uh, especially if you use like butane lighter, it, there's the soot accumulates on it. But it doesn't melt. There's and uh, when I brought the snow home, I did the funny story about my video. Um, my brother-in-law. Um, I showed him what I was doing before I filmed it, and I went and did it a second time. And he said, well, the snow's really dry. It's really dry, and it, 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 you're not going to get a lot of moisture out of it. So he went and got a bucket full of snow, and it melted in the bucket. And I told him, I said, people have also been uh, using the microwave. They'll put a, you know, a snowball in a glass microwave it and it'll melt and you'll get a, a cup of water whatever and well you know not a full cup but it'll be liquid in the cup in the glass whatever but um other than that there's no uh there's no evidence that um any of that's been um uh any other kind of uh reason why any of this is even happening except for that it's some kind of polymer, and the only person who's been actually saying that is uh, Rev. Michelle Hopkins. So, um, I, I've been hoping, and that was like one of the crazy things I was going to ask somewhere on one of these uh, forums on Facebook. Uh, why don't we have any independent researchers, like any independent microbiologists? There's people with a, a, a microscope. <laughs> Now, I remember when I was a kid, I, I got one for Christmas. Don't ask me what happened to it. I probably broke it the same day. But um, I, I'm sure there's people that have access to, to this kind of stuff. So, you know, I don't know. But before we go into the the um, Fukushima pods, I just uh, kind of wanted to put that out there. So if anybody has anything they'd like to post, please put it in the chat. So uh, I'll uh, put the cue back on and we'll go back to listening to the pods. The next one is um, from Rad Chick. Um, it's off of her um, YouTube channel. And I will post the link for the YouTube channel. And I think it's the, the first video when you go to her channel. Uh, it's about Tokyo one year ago. Um, it kind of explains uh, what's going on in Fukushima. So, um, I really find her instrumental. She's the the person who did the Lauren Murray audio that I played before the show started. And um, I almost feel like I want to play it again because I I think it's a it's a four part uh, video set that um, Christina, if I say her name wrong, uh, she goes by Radchek, and um. And Lauren Murray uh, did a, did an interview, and they just talked about all the aspects of uh, radiation, and it really was an interesting um, pod that they put together. It, very informative. It, it covers all the bases from isotopes to uh, accumulation in water, in the ground, and snow, and rain, and uh, just very interesting information. The, the effects, the mutations on life forms so uh, maybe that's something we'll uh, continue with but for now we're going to start with uh, uh, Tokyo it's uh, one year ago um, information pertaining to uh, everything and then I'm going to read an article from ENE News about the Fukushima cover-up so before I do that I want to thank Paula Mathers one of our wonderful hosts who just informed me that we have six new hosts, she didn't give the names, and we're joining with two new stations. So what a wonderful time to be alive that we have all these awesome things happening. So uh, congratulations to Awake Radio, um, and uh, thank you for listening here. We're uh, tuned in to awakeradio.co.uk and chizizradio.com. And we have um, a sister website at awakeradio.us. So please check us out. You can get the most up-to-date news on our host, uh, podcast information. And, uh, and as always, check out the, the chat. Always somebody's. Thank you, Paula. She's a sweetheart. 
always busy here doing stuff. I don't know if she sleeps. I, I don't know how she can be so beautiful and never sleep. I think I'm jealous of her. <laughs> I love you, Paula. But um, let me get back to the podcast. And uh, thank her and Steve, the admins here at Awake and Shiziz at Shiziz Radio for providing this venue for us to present this awesome information. And I love you, Paula, and thank you so much. So here we go, Tokyo, one year ago. Thank you for listening to Awake Radio and Shiziz. The Fukushima catastrophe is probably the worst nuclear disaster in, in human history. It's certainly worse than Chernobyl. The contamination from Fukushima has gone as far south as Tokyo. Uh, I have measured it personally in air filters from cars. At least 12 different air filters from cars were sent to me, some of them from the south of Tokyo, and many of them from 100 kilometers away from Fukushima. And they contain very large amounts of radioactivity in them, high, 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 high levels of cesium-134 and cesium-137. So we can conclude without any doubt that that area, up to 200 kilometers, maybe more, away from the catastrophe, catastrophe site, has been seriously contaminated with radionuclides. Now, if the cars are breathing this material, then so are the people, and so are the children. And so the children will be contaminated with radioactivity. And when I was in Tokyo, I took some samples. Now, I didn't look for the highest radiation spot. I just went around with five plastic bags. And when I found an area, I just scooped up some dirt and put it in the bag. One of those samples was from a crack in the sidewalk. Another one of those samples was from a children's playground that had been previously decontaminated. Another sample had come from some moss on the side of the road. Another sample came from a, um, um, the, the roof of an office building that I was at. And the last sample was right across the street from the main judicial center in downtown Tokyo. Well, I brought those samples back, declared them through customs, and sent them to the lab. And the lab determined that all of them would be qualified as radioactive waste here in the United States and would have to be shipped to Texas to be disposed of. A document submitted to the government two weeks after the Fukushima nuclear accident suggested that the Tokyo metropolitan area might have to be evacuated. But the government failed to acknowledge the existence of the document until the end of last year. The Atomic Energy Commission report was compiled at the request of Naoto Kan, the Prime Minister at the time. The Commission's chief, Shunsuke Kondo, said the document explains possible contingencies following the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear accident as well as preventive measures. The report said massive amounts of radioactive materials could be dispersed from the plant if containment vessels were damaged or used fuel was exposed to the air if water injection failed. It said under such a scenario, residents would have to be evacuated from an area within 170 kilometers of the plant and within 250 kilometers on a voluntary basis. This would include the Tokyo metropolitan area. The report recommended that various methods for cooling down the reactors should be used to avoid this serious situation. Khan told NHK last September that his government had made a simulation based on the worst case scenario. But the report was not treated as an official document until it was discovered in the Commission's office at the end of last year. A Japanese civic group investigating the Fukushima nuclear accident is looking into the reasons why the document was not made public. Into one of the, this year's biggest stories, the Fukushima meltdowns. Kenichi Matsumoto is the ultimate insider. As special advisor to Japan's prime minister and cabinet, he witnessed both the government's and the plant operator's responses to the worst nuclear accident in a quarter of a century. And when it comes to the meltdowns, Professor Matsumoto paints a picture of cover-ups, incompetence and communication breakdown. <laughs> It's Chrissy McMahon again. I mean, it's more doom and gloom, no matter what you listen to, eh? 
trying to keep it happy here, but um, so many things, <laughs> so many yuck stuff about Fukushima and the fallout. Well, we'll we'll go to Rad Chick. Here she is on CV News, uh, front page forecast. Uh, you can find her at CV News uh, Climate Viewer. Dot com. I'm posting the uh, link here on the on the chat. Uh, please check it out. And you could read along with me. I like that. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> fallout forecast for the USA, February 11, 2014. This is the fallout forecast for the next 24 to 48 hours for the U.S. The previous forecast and subsequent monitor monitoring of RAD, better known as radiation levels, showed correlation to high mid-risk areas as well as additional areas that plotted within the low-risk zones, which was unexpected, such as the nature of fallout. As with weather, it can be somewhat unpredictable. The additional areas are within the states of Iowa, Nebraska, and South Dakota. Today, continued monitoring shows increasingly high levels continuing along the Gulf states. And that's where most of the precipitation is falling right now. Um, snowfall accumulations so far this season have been extraordinary. Philadelphia, who only had 6.8 inches at this time last year, has had 43.3 inches so far. Possible large amounts of snow as high as 8 to 12 inches are being tentatively predicted for Washington, D.C. to Maine throughout this week. There is a possibility that the variance of PAX tracks will greatly add or reduce to this prediction. And who or where gets the greatest snow totals? So let's check out the variance of PAX tracks never even heard of that. I guess it means something. California's biggest rainstorm since December 2012. This was February 10th, but from Dr. Jeff Masters, 2014. Brought much needed moisture to the state over the weekend, thanks to the very moist Pineapple Express Atmospheric River Moisture from Hawaii. I'm trying to find this PAX track. I don't know. I guess that wasn't it. Well, I'll put this link up too. Well, I know. You, if you go to that link, you'll find whatever you have to Well, I don't know what PAX tracks is. So it'll be something for me to continue with research. Uh, back to the article. Our fallout forecast may change as well, and we'll be updating accordingly. Something about the map. The full at risk map is a screenshot of the continental U.S. water vapor analysis at the time of posting. Areas in red indicate a high potential for fallout. Areas in pink indicate a medium risk. Areas in yellow are cautionary below. The areas not covered by a color indicator will essentially be precipitation free. This map should only be a guide and does not in any way guarantee that your outdoor area is safe or not safe. It simply shows the risk potential based on a number of weather indicators and atmospheric transport studies. Final preparations began all over the deep south Tuesday morning as winter storm packs. The 16th named winter storm of the 2013-14 season that's what it means, began its first wave of snow and ice in several states. The National Weather Service today said that the storm could be of one historic proportion and with the crippling snow and ice mounts, the agency wrote in an alert prepare now for this potentially catastrophic event, which already started, I imagine, on Tuesday. Uh, I know that North Carolina, where my sister lives, was shut down. Snows will accumulate on roads, making for hazardous driving conditions today across the northern sections and tonight for all areas. The weather service said as a more significant snowfall and ice accumulation occurs Wednesday, Wednesday night. Travel will be dangerous given the high snow amounts combined with the ice. 
Widespread power outages are possible with the higher ice accumulation. Transportation officials started preparing for the storm Monday night by standing, sanding and salting the roads, according to Ralph Ellis at CNN. Many Atlanta schools and businesses are also closed on Tuesday in advance of the snow. What we had two weeks ago was a minor event, Glenn Burns, chief meteorologist for CNN affiliate WSB said, and that is likely to be a major event. Europe and other regions continue to experience epic snow, ice, and flooding events of their own. Siberia even had a rare pollution-related black snow event on February 11th. The sea image highlights of the past weekend's most wintry weather for, from Tokyo to Sochi, and that's available there on the website. For now, Valentine's Day looks like it will be snowy, frozen, and cold-hearted for most of us, with some occasional rads radiation thrown in to spice things up. To see further explanation of the history of fallout forecasts and how to determine risk analysis, see the initial post for January 24, 2014. Prepare now to stay warm and stay safe, Christina. Yeah, she's pretty cool, Chip. Rad check here. So that'll take me into my energy news article on the ENE Energy News website. Uh, Japan Times source reveals Fukushima radiation cover-up. No shit. Massively high levels hidden since last July. Nuclear officials. Something like this cannot happen, but already has. February 12, 2014 by ENE News. It's never a person that actually posts this but up. They are, uh, they have their sources back to the original, so, uh, and they're the most highly trusted. There's other sources as well, but I just lazily went to this this morning because I was out, um, speaking of snow before we get into this article, um, and I will be, uh, ho- uh, that's why, um, I forgot I was supposed to do that. Um, I'm going to do the polar bear plunge on sa- Saturday at uh, Lake uh, Camp Brulee, and they have a lake there, I'm not sure what the lake's name is, I'm sure it's more like a big oversized pond, but uh, we're going to jump in, maybe up to 50 people, and uh, I've never done anything like that, but I worked with a woman from Russia, my my boss, her name was uh, Anna Tabalina, and she, uh, she told me that she used to swim every day. If you look on the map, in the southern part of Russia, there's a gigantic lake, and she lived there in the south portion of Russia, and I, off the top of my head, I can't remember the lake, but uh, she used to swim every day in the winter in that lake, swim, not just jump in, swim, so um, I'm just, uh, was really <laughs> enthralled by what she was saying, I always thought it would be cool, and when I came here, I met this awesome woman, uh, which I will be talking about later when I talk about the Kiwanis who are sponsoring this uh, polar bear plunge. My good friend, uh, Cindy McCarty, uh, she's just amazing, always doing something, and she's been putting together this uh, Kiwanis Winterfest at uh, Camp Brulee, and it's, uh, I went to their meeting last night, uh, their last meeting, I guess, before (laughs) the big event. And everything's so come together, the donations they've gotten, the events they're going to have. And um, I'll go find my pad while we're listening to the next uh, podcast. And uh, and I'll have that stuff already. But uh, we'll go back to this article talking about cold. I don't, I don't know why I brought that up now. But um, sources reveal Fukushima radiation cover-up. Okay, here we go. Japan Times, February 11, 2014. TEPCO hid record level radiation data last July. TEPCO, in parentheses, did not tell the public until recently that massively high levels of radiation were found in groundwater collected last July at the Fukushima No. 1 nuclear plant, even though the utility was aware of the data this month, according to sources. When TEPCO reported the data on the nuclear regulatory regulation authority last week 
it initially claimed that it had only recently compiled the data. NRA sources said, however, the embattled utility later corrected the timing, apparently showing that it had withheld the record readings. The sources said, the withholding of the radiation data looks to be the latest in a long line of missteps for the utility, experts said. TEPCO concluded at the time that the data were inaccurate, citing the huge difference in the two measurements. Despite knowing that its methods of measuring beta ray emitting materials could show lower than actual levels, the sources said the utility has repeatedly changed this its explanation. Now just a, a, an aside here, whenever they're measuring beta ray emissions, um, that's an indication that uh, fission is happening. So when we talk about meltdown, we're talking about these uh, uh, the rods, the radiation accumulated within the reactor is in some way fissioning. It's it's uh, creating the heat, uh, whether because of um, in contact with other uh, rods or in contact with the air. Uh, these two uh, things can uh, create what we know as the, the meltdown effect, um, creating the heat, the heat that, um, as you may know or not, heats the water that creates the energy that we use in nuclear power plants. And uh, um, I, I didn't announce it because I, I wasn't sure uh, the time, but I had a an impromptu interview on Revolution Radio Tuesday night, and uh, I got into this a little bit because of uh, my research I've been doing since November, and uh, it seems to me, and you can take it for what it's worth, but the whole purpose behind nuclear power plants has nothing to do with uh, energy uh, creation. It's more for plutonium and uh, what we would call nuclear weapons uh, production. So, you know, we can get into the esoterics of that, this this little bit of the article. It's only a couple more paragraphs from other sources, but um, I just wanted to throw that out there, that um, we've all been snowed, and um, it has nothing to do with the uh, creating electricity, although it, it, it has that effect. <laughs> um, but anyway, Reuters, February 12, 2014. Almost three years since the reactor meltdown at the Fukushima Daiichi Station, TEPCO, in parentheses, still lacks basic understanding of measuring and handling radiation. Nuclear Regulation Authority, NRA Chairman, Sunuchi Tanaka said on Wednesday, the utility has been widely criticized for an inept response to the March 11th disaster. TEPCO said there was a calibration mistake with one machine measuring strontium levels of well water at the plant, and it had also found an error with devices that decipher all beta radiation dot, dot, dot. I guess I can go to that article, but it just uh, links back to the, uh, what do you call it, to the newspaper. Oh, excuse me, I'm going to sneeze, I think. Uh, it says, Tepco said last week groundwater drawn from a monitoring well last July contained a record 5 million becquerels per liter of dangerous radioactive strontium-90, more than five times the total beta radiation reading of 900,000 becquerels per liter recorded in the well. So there's 5, minute, five million compared to 500,000, which is around 25 meters from the ocean. Yeah, they're just storing it in barrels and besides the leak within the, the plants themselves because of the cracks and the damage that they say was caused by the earthquake 
and the consequential tsunami, but they also admitted to there was cracks in the infrastructure before any of that happened. So back to the article from Reuters, TEPCO said there was a calibration mistake with one machine measuring strontium levels of well water at the plant and it had also found an error with devices that decipher all beta radiation. Something like this cannot happen. This data is what becomes the basis of various decisions, so they must do their utmost to avoid mistakes in measuring radiation, Tanaka told reporters. Though he added the mistakes did not pose a serious safety risk at the plant. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry for laughing. Um, the legal limit for releasing strontium-90 which has a half-life of around 29 years into the sea is 30 becquerels per liter. A TEPCO spokesman said the utility will recheck all beta radiation readings of groundwater in light of the record strontium levels. Last year, radiation levels, power outages, and other mishaps sparked international concern and prompted Japan's government to step in with more funds and support. As part of the turnaround plan approved by the government last month, TEPCO hopes to restart its biggest nuclear station, Kaziwazaki Kariwa, this summer. <laughs> well, you know, all the nuclear power plants in Japan have been shut down since uh, March 11th, 2011, or t March 12th, 2011. TEPCO in November began the hazardous process of removing hundreds of brittle spent fuel rods from the damaged number four reactor building at Fukushima. It's, it said last week it had removed about 9% of more than 1,500 unused and spent fuel assemblies in the reactor storage pool. And that was edited by Aaron Sheldrick and Ian Guhigan. Guhigan. Okay, and that was on February 12th, the Reuters Japan's nuclear regulatory wraps Fukushima operator over radiation reading. Then we have the Sunuchi Tanaka, chairman of Japan's Nuclear Regulatory Authority article. Um, oh, that was just a, a, to quote his comment at Reuters, uh, something like this cannot happen. This cannot become the basis of various decisions. So they must do their utmost to avoid mistakes, otherwise saying that it's of no great concern. Not serious, considering there are six nuclear power generators on the Daiichi uh, TEPCO site, three of which had complete meltdowns and they're working on reactor number four because it's the only one they can get close to. So I guess in the in the hopes that uh, something would happen, there would be a fire or consequent China syndrome, <laughs> I don't know what, total meltdown, that they could remove as much of the, the spent and unused fuel rods as possible. So... Um, there's an update from NHK, record cesium levels in groundwater at Fukushima, which has been reported. The date on this was February 13th, and uh, NHK is a Japanese uh, news sor service, which reports um, at NHK World, record cesium levels in Fukushima plant groundwater the operator of the damaged Fukushima Daiichi plant says water samples taken from the newly dug well containing the highest level of radioactive cesium detected so far in groundwater at the site. Tokyo Electric Power Plant says the record levels suggest that the leakage point could be near the well. The utility on Thursday said it had detected 54,000 becquerels per liter of cesium-137 and 22,000 becquerels per liter of cesium-134 water samples. The samples were taken on Wednesday from the new observation well located 50 meters from the ocean near the number two reactor. The levels of cesium-137 is 600 times the government standard for radioactive wastewater that can be released into the sea. It is more than 30,000 times the level of cesium-137 
found in water samples taken from another observation well in the north last week. TEPCO officials believe radioactive water is leaking from an underground tunnel that extends from the reactor buildings towards the ocean. They have been taking measures to prevent the tainted water from reaching the sea, but have yet to determine where the leak originates. TEPCO suspects the leakage point is near the new well because radioactive cesium is easily absorbed into soil and is unlikely to be carried over a wide area in groundwater. Okay, we've been talking about transhumanism uh, for, for many years. Uh, Michael Cesarian, whom I love to listen to, has, uh, has been an absolute uh, strong voice in uh, offering the scenario for transhumanism and how, how this is, uh, is being played out. I know that our, our Awake Radio hosts have been focusing a lot on geoengineering, and uh, that is now the new uh, coin phrase for chemtrails. Uh, people aren't using that term anymore. They're actually using geoengineering. So I guess we're all going to be on the same page. So as we move forward in the, the next few weeks, we will be more focused on uh, geoengineering and transhumanism, and I will try to get Michael Cesarian on here to kind of talk a little bit more as we go through understanding uh, what Rev. Michelle um, Hamilton uh, spoke about um, what they uncovered. Oh, it's Hopkins, my mistake. Rev. Michelle Hopkins, and uh, finding that it's uh, military purpose. It could be in geoengineering a new uh, or altering species. So um, we know that um, nanotechnology has been part of our our meme here for uh, for decades. Um, I actually have a friend who uh, who moved, he has a house here, but he moved to Virginia. Who wrote on uh, the ethics of nanotechnology and uh, J Store Halls, and maybe I can even get an interview with him just to talk about uh, nanotechnology and how it may be applied in these applications. I'll write him a, a little note on Facebook and see if uh, he'd be even open to this information. You know, a lot of people <laughs> a lot of people with a lot of intelligence are not uh, even considering that any of these things are possible. So uh, as we go to the next article, the highest cesium level in the Fukushima plant groundwater. This is from brettbart.com and I'm not familiar with this. It looks like it's just a blog, but uh, an ENE news source quoted it. So we will continue. Tokyo, February 13th, Q&A. The operators of the damaged Fukushima Daiichi plant said water samples taken from the newly dug well contain the highest level of radioactive cesium detected so far in groundwater at the site. It looks like a repeat of um, what I just read from the other article. So I'm not going to go through the whole thing. It says TEPCO suspects the leakage point is near the new well because the radioactive cesium is easily absorbed into soil and is unlikely to be carried over a wide area in groundwater. Officials believe radioactive water is leaking from the underground tunnel. Okay, yeah, when I go back to that. Now, when they created these uh, uh, Daiichi nuclear power plant on the coastline, on a fault line, uh, in a tsunami-prone area, they had the foresight to, to build a tunnel <laughs> that leads right to the ocean underneath all... Uh, of the uh, the plant uh, reactors, so that was uh, really great of them to do that. So then we have another source. So you, you get this picture when you look at it. It's almost as if you know you don't believe in time travel. You got to believe that um, somebody knew something to know where to put these things. When, when to time them 
to uh, to come undone, whatever. But you know that's a, a story for another time, I guess. But that's the kind of stuff I like to get into, and that's why I call my show All Chemical Connections. This article is called Deadly Cesium Level Spike in Groundwater Underneath Fukushima Plant. This was the 13th of February, 2014, on the Voice of Russia radio. Alarming high levels of radioactive cesium have been recorded in groundwater underneath Japan's crippled Fukushima power plant. Its operator, Tokyo Electric Power Plant, better known as TEPCO, has announced. Samples of contaminated groundwater were taken from a fresh well outside the second energy block. Tests have shown that the levels of deadly cesium there are several thousand times higher than the norm. And it goes in to explain. TEPCO falsely measures Fukushima radiation, mishandles disaster, Excuse me, yet another Fukushima related scandal has broken out as Japan Nuclear Regulatory NRA criticizes the operators of the crippled plant for incorrectly measuring radiation levels in contaminated groundwater at the site almost three years since the reactor meltdown at the Fukushima Daiichi Station. And for those who don't know, Daiichi means number one. Tokyo Electric Power Company, TEPCO, still lacks basic understanding of measuring and handling radiation. Nuclear Regulatory Authority Chairman Shinuchi Tanaki said on Wednesday, the utility has been widely criticized for its inept response to March 2011 disaster. And just an aside, no nuclear power plant company regulators uh, authorities know how to handle the situation except for what they did in Russia which was bury Chernobyl in concrete but for those who are not aware it is still fissioning underneath all the concrete so that's why they continue to monitor it so they're just letting it burn 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 continue with the article Tepco said last week that groundwater drawn from monitoring wells last July contained a record 5 million becquerels per liter of dangerous radioactive strontium-90, more than five times the total beta radiation levels. Reading of 900,000 becquerels per liter recorded in the well, which is around 25 meters from the ocean. Then it goes on. TEPCO in November began the hazardous process of removing hundreds of brittle spent fuel rods from the damaged number four reactor building of Fukushima. It said last week it had removed about 9%, so we already had that information. So let's go back to the original article. Um, You can watch the NHK report um, for the ENE News. That reporters reveal blast ruin inside of containment vessel at Fukushima Unit 4. Okay, here's something. New. This was February 12th. The uh, wall destroyed. Explosion was believed to have been outside reactor. Okay, so this is important. Yomiuri Shimbun. Sh- Shimbun. Uh, I could spell it. We'll go to the original source here. At the Japan News. At japannews.com. Oh, this story is no longer available. Well, I guess. Let's see why. February 13, 2014 at 6.11 a.m. JST. Blast ruined the inside of containment vessel at Fukushima plant. Reporters from the Yumuri Shinbun visit the crippled plant Wednesday. On the top floor of the plant, number four reactor building, a crane was removing spent nuclear fuel. On the lower level, debris and wreckage were scattered. A hydrogen explosion, which is believed to have taken place outside the reactor, destroyed a door attached to the containment vessel, as well as walls and pipes inside the vessel. Photo captions for article blast ruined the inside of containment vessel at Fukushima plant. Yomiri Shimbun report reporters 
look at the inside of the Fukushima number one nuclear power plant, number four reactor building on Wednesday. Containment water on the basement of number four reactor building. I guess that's the only one they can actually get into because it didn't have a meltdown. Uh, Yamuri Shimbun, February 13th at 4 a.m. Wreckage is seen inside the containment vessel at the number four reactor of the Fukushima number one nuclear power plant in Okuma, Fukushima prefecture on Wednesday. And since we can't get to that particular article, we're sorry this article is no longer available. The um, I wanted to report also that um, a few months ago, Japan a actually passed a law that they're not even allowed to report on this. And I don't want to misquote that because um, I want to make sure that I'm saying it correctly. So as we continue... Um, I'm going to just play a song and uh, see if I can find the article about the the legislation uh, prohibiting reporting on uh, Fukushima. I, I don't mean specifically Fukushima, but any probably nuclear uh, uh, information. So we'll we'll just see. Uh, I can find that. I'll be right back. You're listening to Awake Radio. Co. Uk. It's a good time to take a break and shizizradio.com. So thank you all for listening and I will be right back. Howdy y'all. This is the Muddy Muddy Mud Man and I listen to Shiziz Radio. Radio. You're listening to Awake Radio. Straight talk to the awake and aware. Come on, wake up! I'm back, and so was one of my favorite female singer songwriter, Lucinda Williams, with the Happy Women Blues. And I did find the article. I found a gazillion articles. Uh, this happened last November. Japan's new secret bill threatens. The press. So um, we'll uh, read this and whistleblowers. Um, this is from the Daily Beast. dot com. I like the sound of that. Um, an ominous new bill in Japan on its way to becoming law would give the government expanded powers to classify nearly everything as a secret and intimidate the press into silence. Um, I, I like to give dates. This one doesn't have a date. I apologize for that. I'm checking in. It's, there's no date, but this was back in the early part of it. So this is a good place to start. The best way to deal with foul-smelling things is to put a lid over them. Japanese proverb. I guess that's one way. The Japanese government, which already has a long history of cover-ups and opaqueness, is on its way to becoming even less open and transparent after the lower house, the Diet, Japan's parliament, passed this designated secrets bill on Tuesday. With new powers to classify nearly everything as a state secret and harsh punishments for leakers that can easily be used to intimidate whistleblowers and stifle press freedom. Many in Japan worry that if the bill becomes law, it will only be the first step towards even more severe erosion of freedom in the country. The bill which can criminalize investigative reporting of the government or its policies still needs to pass the Diet's upper house and become law and it's meeting some last minute opposition on its way there. It politically in, complete, in politically complacent Japan, thousands of citizens took to the street in the last two weeks to protest the measure. Diet members are voicing disapproval and news organizations are standing opposed. Even cute Japanese celebrities have voiced their opposition. <laughs> A sure sign that this is serious business in the land of the rising sun. Last week, the United Nations Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights voiced their disapproval and concern, noting that this secret bill's 
secrets bill threatens transparency, it, in parentheses, includes serious threats to whistleblowers and even journalists reporting on secrets. With only 30% of the public supporting them, Prime Minister Shin, Shinzo Abe and the Liberal Democratic Party bloc pushed the legislation ostensibly to ensure that Japan can share secrets with the U.S. and other countries. However, even politicians inside the ruling bloc are saying it can't be denied that another purpose is to muzzle the press, shut up whistleblowers, and ensure that the nuclear disaster of Fukushima ceases to be an embarrassment before the Olympics. The special secrets bill is passed on a failed anti-spying bill proposed by Prime Minister Yashiro Nakasone in the 1980s. Currently, there are already several laws on the books that punish civil servants for leaking secret information obtained on the job. The new law would enact harsher punishments to leakers and ominously would allow journalists to obtain information by inappropriate means and whistleblowers to be jailed for up to 10 years. The law would also allow the police to raid the offices of media organizations and seize evidence at their discretion. Under the law, government branches other than the defense military would have the power to designate information as state secret. The bill has even grants the bill has even grants no longer existent agencies the power to classify secrets. I guess they don't edit either. The law names four categories of special secrets which would be covered by protection, national security, diplomacy, counterterrorism, and counterespionage. Yet despite the bill's enlargement of the state powers over information, it contains no oversight process to act as a check on ministries and government agencies designating large amounts of information as secret for capricious or self-interest reason. Under the new law, the Ministry of Financial Services could put a lid on scandal of mega banks loaning money to the Yazuka, Japan's mafia, by classifying their business improvement orders as matters of national security and making them state secrets. The SESC could declare the reasons for delisting a company from stock exchange classified for similar reasons. This is not reassuring of those wishing to invest in the Japanese stock market, which has already been dogged by compliance and disclosure issues. The most tellingly, Masako Mori, the Minister of Justice, has declared that nuclear-related information will most likely be designated secret. For the Abe administration, this would be a fantastic way to deal with the issue of tons of radiated water leaking from Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant since the triple meltdown in March of 2011. There seems to be no end to stopping the toxic waste leaks, but there, there, but the new legislation would allow the administration to plug the information leaks permanently. As the radioactive water from Japan's nuclear disaster continues to pour into the ocean, and our food supply, and it's ominous sign that the Japanese government refuses to disclose information about the levels of pollution or timely information about the next nuclear accident. And security issues at Japan's nuclear power plants begin, which hold enough plutonium to make hundreds of atomic weapons, including reports that they're banned by the Yuzuka, could also be hidden by under the guise of state secrets. Be before, before Japan was selected to host the 2020 Olympics, Prime Minister Abe spoke at the general meeting of the International Olympics Committee, where he assured them the Fukushima nuclear accident is under control. This was followed by revelations of large amounts of radioactive water leaking from the power plant and the remaining water tanks emitting radiation levels so high that anyone working around them would be exposed to a lethal dose within hours. It made Abi look perfidious or clueless or both. We'll have to look that word up, perfidious. He seemed anxious not to lose face again. Mizuho Fukushima 
former leader of the Social Democratic Party, compared the bill to the pre-World War II peace maintenance preservation laws and other secrecy laws at the time, remarking that there was a time in police state Japan when the weather reports could be considered secret. Once you open the door to such kinds of laws, the government will have the right to designate anything as a state secret, and by speaking about it or mentioning it, you can be arrested and prosecuted. Ms. Fukushima explained, especially during wartime, it was very difficult for defendants and lawyers to fight their court cases because they were not told what exactly what was the state secret that they had been accused of having revealed. Outspoken Upper House Counselor Taro Yamamoto, who is known to be a strong supporter of investigative journalism, minces no words. The path that Japan is taking in the recreation of a fascist state, I strongly believe that this secrecy bill represents a planned coup d'etat by a group of politicians and bureaucrats, he warned. While his statements may seem alarmist, even a senior official of the National Policy Agency agrees, I would say this is Abe's attempt to make sure that he own, that his own shady issues aren't brought to light and a misuse of legislative power. Ironically, in a country that worships cute celebrities, the first real reporting on the problem with the bill began in September when Norika Fujiwara, an actress who was also a goodwill ambassador for the Japanese Red Cross, came out against the law on her blog. She indicated it would threaten freedom of speech and democracy itself and urged her fans to pressure the government to kill the bill. When a beautiful celebrity takes up arms against legislation in Japan, even the media takes notice. And after taking notice, they didn't like what they found. The Japan Newspaper Publisher and Editor Association, the Civil Broadcasters Federation, and most major news organizations in Japan have expressed staunch opposition to the bill and a rare journey into the political arena. Even the Foreign Correspondents Club of Japan, which includes both Japanese journalists and non-resident journalists, issued a strong protest against the bill on November 11th. The Japanese media almost without exception, reported the details of the statement. We were alarmed by the text of the bill relating to the potential targeting of journalists for prosecution and imprisonment. It is at the very heart of investigative journalism in open societies to uncover secrets and to inform the people about the activities of government. Such journalism is not a crime, but rather a crucial part of the checks and balances that go hand in hand with democracy. The current text of the bill seems to suggest that freedom of press is no longer a constitutional right, but merely something for which government officials must show sufficient consideration. Moreover, the designated secret bill specifically warns journalists that they may not engage in inappropriate methods in conducting investigations of government policy. This appears to be a direct threat aimed at the media profession and is unacceptably open to wide interpretation in individual cases. Such vague language could be, in effect, a license for government officials to prosecute journalists among almost as they please. If history does not repeat itself, it would seem very likely that as Miss Fukushima fears, Japan is about to take a giant step back into its oppressive past when one also considers Prime Minister Abe's stated ambition to restart Japan's nuclear power plants and remove Article 9 from the Constitution, the article which prevents Japan from waging war, it seems like the Empire of the Sun may be moving towards darker times. And that's the conclusion of that article. And I want to commend uh, both Norika Fujiwara, the actress, and... Mizuho Fukushima, two beautiful women from Japan, two heroes, two of my new heroes. Um, I, I, I want to gild this article because I think it's beautiful that uh, I synchronistically <laughs> collected it, not 
thinking uh, it's uh, full of a lot of innuendos. I, 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 if you were listening while I was reading it, 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 it in a sense validates in some way my own belief that this is basically the, the, the nuclear power plants are collectors for nuclear uh, military purposes. Um, and it, it alluded to something else, which I don't think I want to uh, get into here right now. But um, I'm going to see if I can go back to the initial part and see if I can find something that's a little bit more eco watch. That may be a little bit more up to date on what has happened with that bill, secret spill. Uh, Japan's new Fukushima fascism from EcoWatch.com. Fukushima continues, and this is dated December 11, 2013. Uh, Fukushima continues to spew out radiation. The quantities seem to be rising, as do the impacts. The site has been infiltrated by organized crime. There are horrifying signs of ecological disaster in the Pacific and human health impacts in the U.S. But within Japan, the new state secret act makes such talk punishable by up to 10 years in prison. Taro Yamamoto, a Japanese legislator, says the law represents a coup d'etat leading to the recreation of a fascist state. Or the recreation, I'm sorry I'm saying it wrong. The powerful Ashai Shimbun, Ashai Shimbun newspaper compares it to the conspiracy law passed by totalitarian Japan in the lead up to Pearl Harbor and warns that it could end independent reporting on Fukushima. Prime Minister Shino Abe has been leading Japan in an increasingly militaristic direction. Tensions have increased with China. Massive demonstrations have been renounced with talk of treason. But it's Fukushima that hangs over heavily the nation and the world. Tokyo Electric Power Plant has begun the bring down of hot fuel rods suspended high in the air over the heavily damaged Unit 4. The first assemblies, if removed, may have contained unused rods. The second may have been extremely radioactive. But TEPCO has clamped down on media coverage and complains about news helicopters filming the fuel rod removal. Under the new State Secret Act, the government could ban and arrest all independent media under any conditions of Fukushima throwing a shroud of darkness over disaster that threatens us all. By all accounts, whatever cleanup is possible will span decades. The town of Fairfax, California has now called for a global takeover of Fukushima. More than 150,000 signees have asked the UN for such intervention. As a private cooperation, TEPCO is geared to cut corners, slash wages, and turn the cleanup into a a private profit center. It will have ample opportunity. The fuel pool at Unifor poses huge, huge dangers that could take years to sort out, but so do the ones at Unit 1, 2, and 3. The site overall is littered with thousands of intensely radioactive rods and other materials whose potential fallout is thousands of times greater than what hit Hiroshima in 1945. Soon after the accident, TEPCO slashed the Fukushima workforce and has since restored some of it but has cut wages. Shady contractors shuttle in hundreds of untrained laborers to work in horrific conditions. Reuters says the site is heavy heaving infiltrated is the site is heaving infiltrated by organized crime raising the specter of stolen radioactive material for dirty bombs and more. Thousands of tons of radioactive water now sit in leaky tanks built by temporary workers who warn of their shoddy construction. They are sure to collapse with a strong earthquake. TEPCO says it may just dump the excess water into the Pacific anyway. Nuclear experts Arjun Make Johnny has advocated the water be stored in super tankers until it can be treated, but the suggestion has been ignored.
hundreds of tons of water also flowing daily from the mountains through the contaminated site and into the Pacific. Nuclear engineer Arnie Gunderson long ago asked TEPCO to dig a trench filled with absorbent to divert the flow, but he was told that would cost too much money. Now TEPCO wants to install a wall of ice, but that can't be built for at least two years. It's unclear where the energy to keep the wall frozen will come from or if it would work at all. Meanwhile, radiation is now reaching record levels in both air and water. The fallout has been already detected off the coast of Alaska. It will cycle down along the west coast of Canada and to the U.S. to northern Mexico by the end of 2014. Massive disappearances of sea lion pups, sardines and salmon, killer whales and other marine life are being reported along with terrifying mass disintegration of starfish. One sailor has documented a massive dead zone out 2,000 miles from Fukushima. Impacts on humans have already been documented in California and elsewhere. Without global intervention, long-lived isotopes from Fukushima will continue to pour into the biosphere for decades to come. The only power now being produced at Fukushima comes from massive new windmill just recently installed offshore. Amidst a disaster it can't handle, the Japanese government is still pushing to reopen the 50 reactor forced shut since the meltdowns. It wants to avoid public fallout amidst a terrified population and on the 2020 Olympic schedule for a Tokyo region now laced with radioactive hotspots. At least one on-site camera has stopped functioning. The government has also apparently stopped helicopter-based radiation monitoring. A year ago, a Japanese professor was detained 20 days without trial for speaking out against the open-air incineration of radioactive waste. Now Prime Minister Abe can do far worse. The Times of India reports that the State Secret Act is unpopular and that Abe's approval rating has dropped with its passage. But the new law may take may make Japan's democracy a relic of its pre-Fukushima past. It's a cancerous mark of a nuclear regime bound to control all knowledge of a lethal global catastrophe now ceaselessly escalating. Well, the cancerous mark of a nuclear regime bound to control all knowledge of a lethal global catastrophe now ceaselessly escalating is true in one sense, but in the other, if Fukushima continues, I mean, they're really going to have the 2020 Olympics there? (laughs) Jesus Christ, who's going to go? I don't know. But uh, sorry for cursing. But um, uh, the more I read, the more I feel confident in my own observations and my own opinions about this whole mess. This 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 has got to be. The fresh water is flowing through those pipes and out to the ocean. So, oh my. This this has got to be pre-planned. I mean, the more you look at it, it you can, you can just see this was this was masterminded. Is that a word, masterminded? Here's one more article I think I'll read, just uh, the top of the hour here. Uh, Happy music will come after. This is uh, the Washington'sBlog.com. Japan reacts to Fukushima crisis by banning journalism. This was on November 27th. I wonder if I can find one um, that's a little bit uh, Japan's uh, secrecy law. Uh, Maybe if I punch that in. We'll we'll do a station break and I'll come back and see if I can find something that's uh, more January February oriented. Um, but you are listening to Alchemical Connections and I am your host Chrissy McMahon and we're here on awakeradio.co.uk and shizizradio.com uh, We're going to start moving into the positive timeline so we're going to put a little oddball in there. And uh, we'll listen to a tune. And I will be right back, hopefully, with a more updated article. But I think those two articles I read really gave a, a pretty concise clue 
to what we're dealing with here. Um, we have the y Yuzuko, Yuzuku, uh, the mob in Japan, uh, running the employees uh, that are doing the cleanup. Uh, uh, the TEPCO, uh, Tokyo Electric and Power Company, uh, doing the cleanup while the the state um, issues legislation that blocks anybody from reporting on any of this. So hmm, is there any reason to uh, have any conspiracy ideas about what's going on in Fukushima? Well, I want you all to do your own research and check this stuff out. I'm giving you the links. So uh, make sure you, you do your homework. Study. More will be revealed. So I have the cue on and we're ready. And I'll be right back after a little short break. Thank you for listening. Here on Planet Helium, we listen to all original music on Jesus Radio. You see what's sending out the negative waves, did Moriarty? But Oddball, I did try and tell them, but they won't listen. I tried. Sure. But I did. I did try. Don't hit me with them negative waves so early in the morning. But I can't force them. Listen, I can't. Always with the negative waves, Moriarty. Always with the negative waves. Have a little faith, baby. Have a little faith. But I keep trying. Oddball, I keep trying. But they won't listen. They won't tune in. They really won't. Why don't you knock it off with them negative waves? Why don't you dig how beautiful it is out here? Why don't you say something righteous and hopeful for a change? Tune in to Awake Radio for your... So uh, we're going to start with um, Japanese news secret bill... Oh, no, 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 that's the one I already read. I have a better one. This is uh, December 9th, and this is a repeal the state secrets law. This is an editorial opinion from the Japan Times. So, uh, I don't know if it's signed, uh, it's just an editorial, so it's from the editor. Repeal the state secrets law. Prime Minister Shin Shinzo Abe told a news conference on December 9th, this was actually written December 12th, three days after his Liberal Democratic Party and its coalition partner, New Komito, enacted the state secrets law in the upper house plenary session night of december 6th that he will explain in these details the laws in order to assuage people's fears about it the law is to be promulgated today he also said that the scope of secrets will not go beyond the currently defined by the government and that the law will never threaten people's ordinary lives Abe must have been taken aback by the public's strong criticism of the law. According to the Kyoto News Poll, 54.1% of respondents said the law should be revised in the next ordinary diet session in 2014. 28.2% .2 said it should be scrapped completely and 70.8% felt uneasy about the law. When such a large portion of the public agrees on anything, the government should listen, apparently because the law was forced through the Diet without sufficient debate or consideration. The approval rating for Abe's cabinet has fallen 10.3 points since last month to 47.6%, the lowest since it formed in December 2012. The disapproval rating surged to 38.4%, up 12 Point two points. Boy, that's a lot of numbers. People should not be duped by Abby's misleading rhetoric. The simple fact is that whatever explanation he may give about the law, its contents and nature will not change now that the law has been enacted. If Abe wants to give detailed explanation about the law, 
Why did his administration not set aside enough time for thorough diet deliberations? If it had done so, more problems about the law would have been exposed to the public's eye. According to lawyer Yuchi Kado, it was only at 11.45 a.m. on December 5th that the Abe administration disclosed a 92-page clause by clause description by the Prime Minister Secretariat of the Law at the request of former Social Democratic Party chief Muzuho Fukushima. This omission on the part of the administration clearly shows how it makes light of a democratic process based on a thorough discussion. The Abe administration made 11th hour proposals to set up oversight bodies but they will be made of bureaucrats and will not have power to examine the content of each specific designated secret. Abe said that transparency concerning designation of secrets will be secured, but he gives no evidence to back up his argument. Abe's contention that the scope of secrets will not expand is a smokescreen. It conceals the fact that under the law, Heads of administrative bodies have discretionary power to designate information related to security, diplomacy, counterintelligence, and anti-terrorism as special secrets without effective third-party independent oversight, thus virtually without limits. In this connection, what the Standing Committee of the Catholic Bishops, Bishops Conference of Japan pointed out in its protest statement is important. It said that while information disclosure is the basis of democratic decisions, the law whose definition of special secrets is extremely wide and vague will put the administrative branch of government above the diet, which under the Constitution is the highest organ of state power and the sole lawmaking organ of the state, and the law will carry the danger of limiting the diet's right to conduct legislation related to government as guaranteed by the Constitution, thus threatening the constitutional principle that sovereign power resides with the people. As the committee also pointed out, there is a danger that the defense minister will designate as special secrets the self-defense force, uses of weapons and joint military missions with the United States and foreign countries actions prohibited by the Constitution, thus undermining the Constitution no war principle. Abbe's contention that the law will never threaten people's ordinary lives is also groundless. Under the law, people could be accused of conspiracy for discussing whether to approach government officials for information that happen to have been designated as special secrets or accused of incitement for just asking officials to release such information. The law's definition of ter terrorism is also wide that state authorities could regard as state acts of political, civil, and other activities by citizens aimed at persuading the government and other organizations or people to consider their opinions or demands and thus monitor investigative or suppress activities even before such activities become public. It cannot be overly emphasized that the law undermines freedom of press, people's right to know, and freedom of expression. Cato, the lawyer, noted that Frank LaRue, UN Special Report, Rapporteur on the promotion and protection of the rights of, of, to freedoms of opinion and expression, and UN Human Rights Commissioner Nave Pile regard the law as running counter to Article 19 of the UN International Convention on Civil and Political Rights in 1996, to which Japan is a party. The article, in part, says everyone shall have the right to hold opinion without interference, and everyone shall have the right to freedom of expression. To This right shall include freedom to seek, receive, and impart information and ideas of all kinds, regardless of frontiers, either orally and written or in print, in the form of art, or through any other media of his choice. Cato's call for attention to the covenant is important because it explains, in a concrete manner, 
What constitutes freedom of expression as well as refers to concrete methods people can employ in order to express their views and opinions. The definition of terrorism in the state secrets law includes this phrase, activities that force political and other principles or opinions on the state and other people. One can clearly see that a loose interpretation of this definition could be used to suppress people's attempts to suppress their views and opinions through various means, thus violating Article 19 of the Covenant. The secret law is moving in exactly the wrong direction, as Cato points out. The law does not include any provisions to protect whistleblowers. Whistleblowers acting out of conscience should not be restricted but rather given a, a larger public forum and stronger protections under the law. The fear that if the law takes effect, information about the problem at nuclear power plants will not come out seem tenable. December 6, 2013 should be remembered as the day that the LDP and the new Comieto enacted a law that could undermine not only the freedom of press and expression, but also other various constitutional principles. Citizens realizing that the law is based on shaky and feeble legal foundation should use various means available, such as sending letters to lawmakers, issuing statements, making speeches, organizing study meetings, and taking part in demonstrations to make clear that they will not accept the revival of some falsely glorified past in which Abe seems to believe, a past in which the Japanese public was deprived of the right to know what the government was doing. Repealing the secrets law is indispensable for and ensuring that Japan remains an open society with, with its democratic principles fully upheld. And that article is the editorial Repeal the State Secrets Law by the Japan Times. And uh, I will post that in the chat box for everybody to check out. Remember, do your own homework. Check this stuff out. Do not take my word for it, even though those were not my words. But um, And this pod will be available because I think it's important. It, it incorporates so much information on so many different levels and really gives food for thought about what is actually happening. So let me make sure that uh, as far as the ENE news is concerned that I actually um, went through most of the articles there. Um, it says U.S. and Japan on ENE Energy News. Excuse me. U.S. scientists worried about Fukushima radioactive plume. I, I think that's old news. Science mag radioactive substances that wash up on beaches can enter water supply. The BBC scientists surprised at how much higher radiation levels are in some parts of. Let's cut off are in some parts of ocean from Fukushima. It's mysterious. Fukushima radiation is just going to become a way of life for us. California professor, it's certainly going to be in the environment. It just doesn't go away. And that was February 10th. And then French government maps show maximum radiation directly over Hawaii. And somebody had asked me that, um, on Tuesday, I guess it was uh, Steve Travesty from uh, Revolution Radio. He says, how come we don't hear anything about Hawaii? So uh, very quickly, we have uh, highest levels of anywhere in world, including Fukushima graphic. This is uh, Annie News uh, article, March 21st, 2011 from the French, uh, updated January 29, 2012, uh, from yesterday. Um, I'm not sure this is an older article, but it's funny that nobody's actually even saying anything about Hawaii, and I think that's true. Here's February 8, 2014, Hawaii. Senators introduced bill to require Fukushima radiation monitoring for at least the next five years. Nuclear engineer concerned, wants to ensure people are safe. Official, the facts we can detect 
It throws fear into two individuals. Yeah, well, we know that. Okay, so we have the KITV on February 7th, 2014, with emphasis added. Um, I don't know if they um, cut cut that out, but um, KITV, Hawaii law, lawmakers, when I opened it up, I got the 404 report, so I'll read what it says on the main page. Hawaii lawmakers say they are still hearing from residents who fear some of the radiation will end up in their islands. Adrian Chang, retired nuclear engineer, I just want to make sure what we consume is going to be safe. Catherine Cruz, reporter, Adrian Chang is a retired Pearl Harbor nuclear engineer. He turned out to support a bill calling for radiation testing and voiced his concern before members of the Joint Health and Environmental Committee. Testing happens quarterly on Oahu, Kauai, and the Big Island. Jeff Eckert, Indoor and Radiological Health Branch, Department of Health. We have equipment that is so sensitive so we can detect it as minuscule levels that is far, far below any public health concern. But the fact we can detect it throws fear into individuals. Cruz, the state is also regularly testing out air, rain, milk, and drinking water and says levels of any radiation found in fish have been extremely low. Senator Josh Green, I had a difficult time finding it and the latest update was seven or eight months ago. Eckert, we are still at normal background radiation levels. We are considering posting the results because of the request we have been getting from the public crews. A similar bill introduced in the House was also heard today. The Senate committee is to take a vote next week. So um, I guess even their concern to, to a point and also looking into uh, how they can uh, make sure that they're giving ample information to the public. So I will post that into the chat now, and uh, the also now is incorporated into this archive. So we can say, well, we checked. <laughs> and there hasn't been a report for the last six months. So there are no updates. And they're saying whatever they are monitoring has been extremely low. So uh, I guess that's good news for Hawaii. And... Uh, good news for the majority of the United States on the Pacific Coast, the West Coast there, that um, if Hawaii is uh, not being hit, and I don't have a map in front of me, so I don't have that uh, geological information, but um, I'm sure as I continue down the list here with the world on the e, &E Energy News uh front page. BBC, Ukraine on the brink of a civil war. Government threatens to blow up nuclear plants. Oh boy, we need to know that. And when was that? Report it. Uh, Post Fukushima report, concern over plutonium and uranium being deposited. And I guess I should finish one before I start another. Um, being deposited and reconcentrating far away, isotopes transfer to land via sea spray, aerosols, flooding, human exposure by inhalation, food, and contact. Yes. The House of Commons uh, Energy and Climate Change Committee, this was December 27, uh, 2013, report by Annie News, Energy News. Um, Recommendations for post-event marine monitoring programs. And I have read this in the past. So this is also see uh, nuclear expert Fukushima melt, melted fuel is drifting in ocean and onto land, lacking any containment. It ends up on the coastline and blows into communities. People get an exceptional dose. Health of harm will go on for thousands, if not tens of thousands of years, and there's an audio with that. 
so maybe we can get that. But I wanted to see what the date was. This was August 23rd, 2013. So I know these are a little bit older reports. So back to the BBC, Ukraine on the brink of civil war government threats to blow up nuclear plants, facilities on high alert after seizure of energy ministry. And this was January 30th, 2014. So this was over two weeks ago. Um, CNN, BBC, uh, Pen Penza News, VOR, BBC Monitoring, Moscow Times, um, Communist, Valentine, Madras, i um, sorry about that, and the ITARTAS, January 28th. I guess the oldest article here is the CNN report on the 30th. So we can go to that one quickly before the top of the hour. Ukraine still on the brink as Klitschko calls amnesty proposal unacceptable. Kiev, Ukraine will giving Ukraine's anti-government activist amnesty help avert what its first modern day leader fears will be a civil war. Wednesday's night vote by parliament to let those who have taken to the streets the past two months off the hook is its latest attempt to try to lower the temperature on the crisis in the Eastern European nation. Um, I did say it was CNN, and this is the 30th of January. Top legislator announced that all factions had approved the amnesty law, yet the opposition didn't rally around it. Another opposition leader, the Ukraine Democratic Alliance for Reforms, Vitaly Kitschitsko said he and his supporters could not stand behind the move that basically called for an end to protest without real change beyond freeing the 218 activists who the Interior Ministry says have been arrested. People took to the streets because they want change. The situation, Kitschitsko said, a statement, we will free people if they go home is unacceptable. It cannot be understood. Today, the key issue is the confrontation between people and government. Withdrawal of changes and amnesty is not enough, especially compared to the last week's violent confrontation. Kiev snow-covered streets were calm Wednesday. Still, the tension, the anger, the determination was evident, especially among those hunkered down in makeshift barricades in the central independent square and a road leading up to the parliament parliament i think the people should not leave the barricades when kiev residents told cnn noting nothing is decided yet let them decide now they have promised but don't make decisions people are being tricked they're tired of it the ukraine the ukrainian isn't the only one who believes this ukrainian is the only one who believes time may be running out so too does leonard Kruvchuk, who between 1991 and 1994 was Ukraine's first president after it became independent from what had been the Soviet Union. He addressed a special parliamentary session aimed at seeking a way out of the deepening political crisis. The parliament won't reconvene until February 4th, and the opposition hasn't announced its next move. That leaves the volatile situation in limbo, much like it's been for weeks. Krupchuk said there's real urgency to find an answer to this crisis, even if the answer itself is not clear. Let's be honest, the situation is dramatic, but Ukraine and the world recognize the country is on the brink of civil war, Krupchuk said. EU officials stop this senseless violence. Opposition politicians and activists welcome the concession that the Wednesday emergency session came after a day of political upheaval when Prime Minister Mykola Azarov and his cabinet resigned and draconian anti-protest laws were annulled. Parliament also voted Tuesday to annul controversial anti-protest laws ran through January 16th by members of President Viktor Yanukovych party of regions in a show of hands. Parliament overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly backed the repeal.
but the president still hasn't signed it. Anger over the anti-protest laws escalated tension in the Capitol, with police and protesters fighting pitched battles and burning tires and barricades. The legislation also prompted concern in the European Union and the United States where leaders condemned what appeared to be an attempt to limit freedom of speech and the right to protest. EU Foreign Policy Chief Catherine Ashton traveled to Kiev and met with Yanukovych Vojch, on Wednesday. It's important to stop the senseless violence. The dialogue that happens from time to time needs to become a real dialogue, Ashton later told the news conference. It's very clear that people are very keen to find a solution. The, there is no question of the importance of finding a quick way forward. And then it just goes on and on and on. So um, that's another interesting thing that is happening in the world news. Russia experts Fukushima pollution spreads all over the earth. Study the IAEA website. Core meltdown risk now around 1,000%. Uh, okay, so that might be an older one because that, they've been saying that since before November. Yeah, it was November 2nd, uh, 2013. So I, I kind of knew that from the tone of the uh, But I want to thank everybody for listening to Chemical Connections on wakeradio.co.uk. I'm your host, Chris Mann, and broadcast on shizuzradio.com. Uh, I'm here every Thursday morning, 9 a.m., and Sunday nights, 9 p.m., Eastern Standard Time. Howdy, y'all. This is the Muddy Muddy Mud Man, and I listen to Jazz Radio. You see what's sending out them negative waves, did Moriarty? But oddball, I did try and tell them, but they won't listen. I tried. True. But I did. I did try. Don't hit me with them negative waves so early in the morning. But I can't force them. Listen, I can't. Always put the negative waves, Moriarty. Always put the negative waves. Have a little faith, baby. Have a little faith. But I keep trying. I ball, I keep trying. But they won't listen. They won't tune in. They really won't. Why don't you knock it off with them negative waves? Why don't you dig how beautiful it is out here? Why don't you say something righteous and hopeful for a change? Tune in to Awake Radio for your positive waves.
Well, sorry for that pause. I was trying to figure out how to say, Aishite, my oh my. I love you in Japanese. <laughs> I totally messed that up. <laughs>